Welcome to the settings area inside of here fish to get here. You'll go to the navigation area, hit the settings area, the bottom most icon note for admin users. You'll be able to access and view and edit these settings for those that have user access only. This area does not appear. So the first tab in the settings is company settings. And here you set your account information and general settings and also some branding configuration. Just to start in the general area, you can rename your instance of Herefish if you like, select your location and also the desired time zone that you'd like and that will affect your automations. So you can change that here if you like. The email branding area is of particular importance, especially for our automation blueprints. We utilize the branding in this section to customize the content that's utilized in those pre-built automations and blueprints. So here you can upload your company logo, choose the color that you want primarily to utilize. This will auto populate for buttons and such. If you know the hex code, you can enter it here or you can click the color icon and select one and then plugging in the appropriate URL pages. There are some um, automation blueprints that utilize those URL pages. So you want to make those as accurate as you can. And then you also have the ability to, to do some survey branding. So here again, you can enter in the hex codes or pick the color of those settings that you'd like. And then the last section in this module is the email footer. So this is a requirement uh, from a third party uh, emailing perspective. You can customize this area here. Um, and so, you, but you have to ensure uh, that you include the unsubscribe option. There's some details in here that will guide you. And of course, you can always reach out to us if you have any specific questions there. The next tab is uh, the Bullhorn tab. This is where you will see information for all of your users uh, in the system. You'll see how many individuals uh, they own uh, from the system. You can, if you click someone's name, I'll click mine here, you can deactivate someone uh, in here, Fish, if you like. What that will do is it will allow them to not be able to own any candidates or contacts inside here, Fish. So that's useful if there's uh, ATS users that might have ownership of a candidate or contact, but you'd never want messages to come from them. You can come here, switch them off in here fish, and it doesn't affect anything that's happening or occurring inside of the database. And then the other interesting note here for each of your users, you can also put in a calendar booking link URL, and that becomes a merge tag that you can utilize in your content so that uh, messages that are going out can include that booking link and a button or some other form of link. And that way uh, you can dynamically share the appropriate calendar and the recipient can book time on the, uh, on the sender's calendar uh, kind of dynamically. So that can be a, a great feature there. The other big aspect of this uh, tab is this big blue bullhorn integration settings button. This is where the field mappings inside of here fish come from. So the headers here are the entities inside of Bullhorn that we're grabbing this information from. So you candidates, contacts, that can sales contacts, client contacts, some organizations call them differently, but the people that you're talking to at your client companies, you have placements. We also have submissions, companies, and jobs as well. And of course we bring in your statuses, drop downs, things of that nature. These already checked fields here in each of these entities are standard fields that we bring in automatically. So there's nothing that you have to configure. Those get brought in as soon as we do the data sync and automatically sync each time we grab your data. These uh, fields below unchecked, these are unhidden custom fields in the appropriate entities. As you can see here, you can select uh, ones that you'd like to bring in and just hit save and then they will become able to be searched on in here fish, be able to be utilized as merge tags and can be used in the system. The other interesting aspect here is this setting here. You can also bring in um, hidden fields 
if you'd like to. So these would be examples of custom fields that are in the in individual entities, but they're hidden. So they're not visible on the front end UI when you're inside of Bullhorn, but you can still build automations around information or these fields by coming here and uh, bringing in like this example right there. So this is where kind of the magic happens, where the, the field mappings come in. So if you want to bring in an additional field, you'd come here. If you have a question about you know, what something is, you want to bring that in here. One thing to note is that these standard fields that we bring in, we utilize the system name um, as, as far as uh, what those fields are called inside the field mappings. So you, have, might, you might have renamed the, the label name of that field to something else. But in here, fish for these standard fields, we're going to look and call them uh, the system fields, just because typically there's a lot uh, of similarity or near universal naming conventions around those. For your custom fields, we bring in the label name, so that's the name that you specify. And for those of you who aren't aware of the difference, when you're inside of your field mappings area in Bullhorn, the leftmost column name that's the system name, and then the column that's right next to that uh, on the right. That would be the label name, and that's what displays on the UI. So just a heads up there, and we you get that question from time to time. The other aspect here is we sync with your database hourly. So when you make a change uh, or new data comes into the system, typically that hour that information is in here fish within an hour or sooner. If there's something that you just created or a field that you want brought in immediately, you can come into this area, hit the sync bullhorn data now button. And this will jump your sync request uh, kind of higher up uh, to the top of the queue. And then you'll get an email notification once the sync has completed. For databases of larger size, that can still take a little bit of time, a kind of span of minutes. Uh, for smaller databases, oftentimes you'll get that sync uh, complete notification within just a minute or two. But that can be a, an area you can come here to utilize if you want to bring in uh, a field more readily or you just created a new tear sheet, something along those lines. The next area is the ownership assignment rules. So this is a, a rule kind of logic hierarchy that governs a candidate and sales contact ownership inside of Herefish. So it applies to Herefish only by default. But with these rules, you also have the ability to pass the ownership changes back to Bullhorn as well, if you desire. So you can utilize these to um, you know, make changes to your database. So these rules affect both candidates and uh, sales contacts. So they affect them both. And how this works, a logic hierarchy, we look to see if the first rule applies. And if it doesn't, then we'll look to the second and on we go down. And if none of the rules apply, then we'll apply the backup rule. Now, ownership is an important concept in Herefish because you have the ability to have messages come dynamically from the Herefish owner of a candidate or sales contact. You can also send notifications and alerts and reminders to that person uh, as well. So here you can customize system-wide uh, kind of that ownership area. And as you can see, you have a, a lot of options, kind of built-in rules that you can create. Um, you know, the most common is you would just mirror the ownership that you have inside of Bullhorn. That is the rule that's currently in, in uh, slot number one here. But then you can also look to see uh, those, the most recent uh, active user that left a note, who last submitted the candidate, last placed the candidate. And then you can create your own kind of custom rules as well, where you assign some list logic, and then you can assign to either um, one user or a series of users via the round robin. And the round robin will just randomly distribute uh, any, anybody that matches that list into uh, the number of people that you have via the round robin. So as you can see, there's some, some custom rules um, utilized in this area as well. So that's the ownership assignment rules. So if you have questions on that, let us know. The website integration tab, this is where you can get some of the get visibility in some of the technology steps that kind of are occurring. So the first, uh, one of the first main pieces is uh, the website tracking code. So that's actually in here. It's one of the initial steps that you'll complete uh, in your onboarding implementation. 
Um, once this tracking code is inserted in, on your website and verified, it will unlock a series of capabilities uh, for HearFish. And number one, you'll be able to utilize surveys, which is a great tool, so it's important to get done. But then also you're able to uh, track uh, visits to your website, job views, job applies, things of that nature, which unlocks a higher level of activity and behavior tracking and triggering. So uh, once that tracking code has verified in there, you also have the ability to set up uh, kind of uh, flags for these, these events. So job views, job applies on the candidate side, and then actions and interests on the sales contact side. Uh, those will are able to be um, set up. They're available metrics when you're inside of an automation or on the dashboard. Then you can also set up alerts uh, for when these things occur. So uh, having these automatically tracked can be quite helpful. And you know, typically the way that's structured is you would kind of key in on a unique URL structure that indicates uh, the, the action, appropriate action. Um, we have, we, we do have the ability to set up the website tracking code on multiple websites. So if you utilize several websites, we can do that. It's not a problem. And we can customize this area to support multiple URLs through regular expression. So if that is of an interest, please reach out to support. Um, and we will help walk you through that process. We've gone through it several times. We know, uh, how to, how to write the code in that language to utilize that. So we'd be glad to help, to help you with that. And as you can see, once the website tracking is verified, you'll get a nice green uh, on your website URL, lets you know that it's, it's working. And then once these automatic uh, interests and actions are configured, you'll also see that in green. If it's not configured, you'll see red. And I've seen some clients, I get concerned about that. It says that they're not tracking. Just to, to be uh, totally um, kind of aware of what's happening there, is if your website code up here is green, that means tracking overall is good and you're all set. If, if these down here are red, that means that those automatic uh, actions, interests, and tracking isn't set up, but you can still utilize the list criteria for page views, uh, job views, uh, the, those things um, inside of the list criteria. So something to note there. And then you can utilize this test web page functionality below here. You can utilize that to um, test to ensure the code is working. If you have it on multiple sites, if you have it on your job board, um, you, know, you wanna make sure it's there. Um, one important note, if your job board is on a different URL, we would need the website tracking code on that URL too, so that we could set up job scraping or you could track individuals that are going there. So another common thing that we see. The other uh, big tech setup that we do is uh, the, the email domain authentication. So again, it's one of the, the first technology steps that gets done in the onboarding and implementation. So you receive those uh, DNS settings that need to get, uh, or the CNAME settings that need to get added um, to your domain uh, from here, Fish, uh, from your, your project manager who's helping you onboard implement. Once those are entered and verified, messages that are coming from here, Fish will route through your domain instead. So you gain the visibility that is coming directly from someone in your organization. You get rid of that via kind of a third party in, in the sending of the email. Uh, so the recipient, it appears that it's coming directly from your recruiter or consultant. And then also you gain the same deliverability that you would if it was your domain. So definitely a best practice, best step, which is why we include it right at the start. Um, and typically you either will get that information here in this area or uh, in, in kind of a, a separate Google Doc that gets sent your way. Then the last item on this page is we have the ability to um, set up job syncing kind of rules. So if that website tracking code is on your job board, once that's configured and set up, uh, we can kind of create um, kind of dynamic searches and filters that will route jobs uh, according to how this is configured. So this would be your fallback list of jobs, just your, your regular kind of uh, job page. So if someone doesn't match any of the rules that you create, then they would just get the most recent jobs that are on your job board. And then you're able to create specific 
searches on your job board, whether that be uh, searches by how the URL structure changes, um, that's probably one of the most common ways, or if you have something along like this where you can select a category um, or, you know, or something like a search, a keyword search on your website, that would appear here. And then you tie that, that search, you tie that to a specific list so that if the candidate is on that list, they would get jobs from this specific job sync setting that you set up. So you set, set up several of those. If the candidate matches the, the list uh, that you set up, they would get the appropriate jobs from that sync setting. And if not, they would get the most recent jobs from the fallback setting. The next tab is the users tab area. So here is where you can set up additional users. So by, you can do that here, putting in the email address, uh, first name, last name. Again, you can, uh, you have two roles that are available. A user isn't able to access the settings area, uh, but admins are able to. And then you have the ability here to, to enable a uh, user automatic notifications. So the weekly roll up, that is a feature that would send uh, an, an automated kind of uh, summary of everything that's happened in the preceding week inside of Herefish. The second uh, setting here would, would give you an alert when a message is about to send for the first time within an automation. So you know about it prior just to make sure everything is good. And then the last, you get a notification for each new placement that occurs that was sent uh, or had a Herefish email communication um, kind of in, in their history. So that you can go in here and enable or, or disable those whenever you like. And then when you're inside of these, uh, you can deactivate or, or reset someone's password or just delete the account. One important thing to, um, to note is that you a user has to have a unique email address. So if your email address is utilized in another instance of Herefish, you'd have to utilize another one or some sort of uh, email parameter on it in order to get that to work, just as an FYI. And the last tab here is the API. So this area, it can be useful if you want to create some API connections directly into the Herefish database. The most common use case that we see is if you want to integrate a website form or something that's happening from a third party system uh, directly into your database via a webhook. Um, so that can be done. The API documentation down here will provide kind of all the information that's required there. You would need to generate uh, an API key. It's important when you do generate an API key that you write that down because once it's generated, we don't have visibility as far as what it is. So you'd have to generate a new one if you've forgotten it. Um, this area isn't commonly used, but it is here and available if you are interested.